Roxo Media House. From the Flying Tea Club Studios at Roxo Media House, this is Frogs Today. With special guests from the SEC Network, Tom Hart. Frogs Today recruiting expert, Dave Bowden. And first, we get you caught up on TCU baseball. Here's your host, the voice of the TCU Horn Frogs, Brian Estridge. Friday edition of Frogs Today starts right now here at the Flying Tea Club Studios. Got a great lineup for you. Our friend Tom Hart, the voice of the SEC. He will join us from the SEC Network presented by ESPN. Uh, the Frogs in Mississippi State play on Saturday, tomorrow, in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. That's going to happen at the hump, they call it, in Starkville at 3 o'clock tomorrow. We'll get a preview of what the Frogs may expect out of SEC basketball. By the way, it'll be SEC officials as well on Saturday for the that one. David Bowden's going to stop by. It's a huge recruiting weekend here in Fort Worth for TCU football. It's junior day and there's a big name on campus this weekend. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, but right now we start the day with some news and notes that's happening around the league, including the league coaches in baseball in the Big 12 voting TCU number one pick to finish first in the Big 12 preseason poll. The Horn Frogs ranked as high as number 14 in some of the preseason polls as well. Garnered five first place votes. That was more than anyone else. As a matter of fact, Texas Tech was uh, well, they were picked to finish second uh, or third, I should say, behind Oklahoma State uh, and then Texas coming in at fourth. By the way, since joining the Big 12 in 2013, TCU has been picked no lower than fourth. Ten times the Frogs have been picked third or higher in the poll. Uh, we called up with head coach Kirk Sarlos about that number and uh, the fact that they are the preseason number one. And what does he attribute that number to? Yeah, I think it, what it is is it, like you said, it respects the program in terms of what it's done in the past. I think, you know, we've been in the in, in the conference something like ten years, and we've we've got some part of a championship in eight of them. So I think it says a lot for that. Um, for this year's team, nothing. I think, um, you know, I think you have some guys back from last year's team. And, um, you know, the coaches decided, you know, they, they want to put that, you know, heap of praise on us. And, uh, but really it doesn't matter. You know, you look at the preseason rankings in every sport, I wish they'd do away with them because it really doesn't matter. It's, it's from last year's team and what they think this year's team can be. By the way, a league high six TCU baseball players were part of the preseason all conference team. They cranked up practice today on the first day. We asked him going in what he wanted out of day one. Really for it to be no, uh, no different than any other day. You know, we've put a lot of great work in, whether it be in the fall or since the guys have come back and we've been able to be with them in short periods. Uh, now that it's we get them four hours a day, really nothing changes. You know, we've been doing this for uh, since the 15th. And uh, the 27th, which is tomorrow, is is just another day. Just like I said, February 17 and hopefully June 17. You got to take them for what they are, and it's just an opportunity to get better. That's TCU baseball coach Kirk Sarlos. All right, turn our attention out to men's tennis, where for the eighth consecutive year, college tennis's marquee indoor event takes place right here in Fort Worth as the third ranked Horn Frogs get set to host the ITA kickoff weekend. It'll happen now from tomorrow, Saturday through Sunday at the Baird Freeman uh, complex of so the indoor facility there. It's a great lineup. The regional includes the, the likes of Utah that will be there, Texas Tech, Gonzaga as well. Utah, by the way, the number two seed in the two day affair, followed by the Red Raiders at three, then the four seeded Bulldogs. Of course, the number one seed is the TC you Horn Frogs. Uh, the Horn Frogs face Gonzaga at two on Saturday. By the way, TCU is the defending ITA national champion. TCU women's basketball dropped a tough one to number 18 Iowa State earlier in the week. They'll host West Virginia. That'll happen tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock at Schollmeyer Arena. Horn Frogs men's side getting ready to take on Mississippi State. That's at three o'clock as we mentioned tomorrow from Starkville. So what's different about the SEC and the Big 12 as far as college basketball is concerned? Well, our friend Tom Hart will tell us because he's going to join us next from the SEC Network with Frogs Today continues after this time. 
Dave's Hot Chicken is a cult favorite and now has two locations in Fort Worth, Bryant Urban Road on I-20 and Berry Street at TCU, both owned and operated by Horned Frogs. Mention the Frogs Today Show and get 10% off anytime and order online at daveshotchicken.com. The Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student athletes through a series of unique event based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. Texas-based Happy Water offers the best-tasting, sugar-free kids' drink ever made. Happy Water comes in four delicious flavors that you can find at local retailers and on Amazon. Each pouch contains zero grams of sugar, zero calories, and zero percent juice. Head to happydrinks.com for more information and to purchase Happy Water. That's H-A-P-I drinks.com. Live happy. Be happy. Drink happy. Frogs Today continues here now for the Flying Tea Club Studios. We welcome in an old friend, the voice of the SEC. I like to call him that because whenever I hear his voice, I think SEC. His name's Tom Hart. He joins us right now. He's got a big one. He's got Arkansas and Baylor coming up as part of the Big 12 SEC Challenge tomorrow. Of course, the Frogs taking on Mississippi State in Starkville, Stark Vegas at 3 o'clock. Tom, we wanted to get you on to dive right into this thing a little bit. Come Big 12 basketball, you know, we're, we're kind of, uh, well, we're fortunate here in that the league's, it's really good right now. Horned Frogs are having a, a, a terrific season, obviously. What are they in for when it comes to SEC basketball? Will we see a shift in styles here? I think so. I think I think a big shift, and there's a couple of different ways to think about where the SEC is as a whole. And Horn Frog fans will see that in Mississippi State. They're kind of the the blueprint for what the SEC is. Um, things have shifted over the years, right? They always go in cycles, and the SEC now is a league that's predominantly a defense first league. There's some elite defensive units um, in this conference. Tennessee is the best. Rick Barnes is playing this man-to-man -man pressure defense and they've been held holding opponents of 40 points in a game oh, which wow. is unheard of it so the scoring's lower in the league and and the reason for that is so many teams take great pride in their defense um there are i think half the league right now in league play brian is shooting under 50 percent from two from mm. two Ooh. right so yeah that makes you go well that's not very good well, the, the counter to that is it's a league full of really good bigs, and you'll see one in Tolu Smith on Saturday afternoon, that are great rim protectors. And so if you don't have a squad full of great deep shooters and can knock it down from three, what SEC defenses will do almost to a man is they're just going to sink back in, they're going to protect the paint, they're going to keep you away from the rim, and if you find a way to get in the paint, they're going to have a shot blocker waiting there for you. So – that's the result of that as a whole outside of Alabama, which is in its own tier as one of the top teams in the country. And they're elite offensively. There's a lot of rock fights out there. There's a lot of tractor poles. They kind of turn into this black and blue, like old school, almost big East basketball. So you better be prepared, wear your shin guards and have an ice pack ready. Yeah, that's interesting because TCU has been so good in transition. Number one in the country in fast break points. We saw that against Kansas. We saw it the other night against Oklahoma as well. I wonder if they can sort of will Mississippi State into a running game in a, 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 at all. I mean, the Bulldogs come in averaging, what, like 66, 68 points a game. That might be hard. I think it's possible in the respect that um, – the game's at the hump. It's in Stark yeah. Vegas, which, by the way, is a quintessential collegiate town for folks up there. It's it's a really cool spot, and I'll give you some highlights of that in a second. All right. But um, Chris Jans, in his time at New Mexico State, has before making it to Starkville as the head coach there, has been a slow tempo coach. You know, defense first. We're going to grind it out and stop you on the defensive end. But they struggle to find points in a half court. Um, so. One way to do that is being willing to run. And I think teams who, who aren't great running teams are more willing to do that at home to try to get the crowd into it versus, say, playing on the road. And, and the fear is that then the home team starts running on you and it balloons and mushrooms into this huge home court advantage. 
you know, you look at their roster also, they're playing 11 guys, it looks like. I mean, at least 11 yep. or so are averaging in, in double digits. They're going to run a lot of bodies at you, aren't they? They are, um, and that's mainly in the backcourt. Uh, guys like Shaquille Moore, Tyler Stevenson, DJ Jeffries, who started his career at Memphis playing for Penny Hardaway, is a great slasher. Right. Um, he can get into the paint, good mid-range game. He's one of those guys that uh, Jans needs to start knocking down some perimeter shots if they want to be um, – more efficient offensively. Their point guard, Deshaun Davis, does a good job running the offense. Uh, but but it's kind of, you know, as I described, there, there are no secrets with this team. It's let's pound the ball into Tolu Smith. Uh, let's get, and he's a veteran player. He's been around for a while now. He knows what it's like to, to bang in, in college basketball. Get the ball into his hands. Let him work around the rim. He's also a willing and able passer out of the post. So that's a good advantage for them. All right, uh, give folks some idea as to what they're going to experience uh, in the hump. There's a pretty good group from TCU making the trek to Stark Vegas. What will they ex- what will they see there for this? Atmosphere? Well, you'll see it. Yeah, you'll see a, a, a campus kind of under construction. They've t- taken a lot of money, kind of like you know TCU did years ago. Hey, we've yeah. got this money. Let's put it into facilities. Um, so the hump is currently under construction. You're going to see some open spots where they're going to put in suites and they're going to gussy this thing up. It's kind of the last piece of the puzzle on campus at Mississippi State. They expanded the football stadium. It looks really nice. But you're going to probably park right next to the nation's crown jewel of a baseball stadium. And I want you to pay attention if you're a TCU fan when you walk up. Look into left field. And what you'll see in left field is a separate building that houses, I think, a dozen condominiums. In fact, when Mike Leach got the job at Mississippi State, he tried to live in those condos at the ballpark. <laughs> and finally, the authorities came to him and said, you, you can't have an address here. You can't get mail here. You, you can only, because of how they're coded, you can only stay here so many nights a year. And he goes, what do you mean? This is perfect. I can walk right across the street to the football offices. Yeah. So they have a, a, a former AD, John Cohen, who is a head coach at baseball at Mississippi State. Prior to that was at Kentucky. Like, they've really invested in the sport. And, of course, they won the national championship a couple of years ago. And you'll see that investment firsthand. It, it's really, really cool, and they take great pride in that. Yeah, you know the fellows at Oklahoma State are going to call you out on whether or not theirs is better than, than Mississippi State's as far as baseball. Hey, you, you can spend all the money you want, um, but once you put condos in your ballpark, you then win. I'll listen. Yeah, you, yeah. you win. All right, Tom, you, you were going to hit us on some other things. There's a great breakfast place, I think, in Starkville, too, that you have to go to, right? Yeah, there's a couple of them. Um, there's one right down the, downtown, Starkville Cafe, uh, yep. a restaurant Tyler's downtown as well. If, if you're having a hard time getting into restaurant Tyler, go around the building and down the alley, and there's a speakeasy underneath the building that used to be in old, uh, used to be the storage for the old shoe store that uh, that occupied that corner of that of that downtown uh, downtown eatery. And then right around the corner from downtown, and every, it's a small town. Everything's uh, you know pretty much walking distance. Right. Uh, there's a fantastic barbecue place called Little Dewey. And it's a, it's kind of a, a campus. My dog heard me talking about barbecue, wanted to get in on the action. Uh, it's a it's a Starkville landmark. They love their sports there. You'll see all the pictures when you walk in the building. Uh, that's a go-to if you're grabbing lunch before you go over to the game. All right, Tom, always a pleasure to see you, man. Uh, look forward to seeing you down the road. By the way, have you, have you been able to – I know you do – been able to keep up with Big 12 basketball at all at all I know your responsibilities have you locked in on the SEC predominantly but what do you think so far uh yeah no doubt in fact um I had Kansas and Missouri each of the last two years a Missouri guy I love the history of college basketball and that's one of the great rivalries now after the game Bill Self uh, when I ran into him walking out he goes uh now Tom you you request this game every year right and I go yeah coach I sure do and he goes you want to think twice about that next time? You know, they've beaten the doors off Missouri yeah. back to back years since they renewed that thing. I, I just think that overall, I, I'm not telling uh, the viewers anything they don't know. From top to bottom, the strength of that league is is amazing. And to see the success at Kansas State, what Jerome Tang has done, yes. uh, I, I, it's just fantastic. And specifically, as a guy who covered the SEC, uh, if you're not familiar with Keontae Johnson's story, you know, he's a guy right. who was a SEC preseason player of the year and was going to be a first round pick and then had the heart ailment and had to sit out um, to, to see everyone in the SEC loves the guy to see the success success he's having. The little apple is just 
fantastic and, and one of the great comeback stories in sports history. Yeah, Horn Frogs uh, got the best of Kansas State when they met earlier in the year, but you, he had a, I think, 23 that night. He was good. Uh, there's no question about it. Tom Hart, always a pleasure, man. Thanks for carving out some time for us. Look forward to seeing you down the road, my man. Brian, happy to do it. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Tell my there buddy you, Mark Cohen I said hello. I will do it. There he goes, the voice of the SEC. Tom Hart joining us here today on Frogs Today. Coming up next, big recruiting weekend uh, for the Horn Frogs, including one special quarterback visitor. We'll talk about that when our recruiting guru, David Bowden, joins us next. Frogs Today continues after this time. Say hello to the water of tomorrow. Richard's Rainwater. Richard's Rainwater is 100% rain. Refreshing, renewable, and the only ingredient we use in our water. Why rain? Because everyone deserves access to clean water. And rain is a 100% renewable resource available everywhere. Drink the rain. Save the planet. Shop now at richardsrainwater.com. For exclusive interviews and content on TC Recruits, subscribe now at frogstoday.com. Any sport, anytime. It's your source for all things TCU. Only on frogstoday.com. Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student athletes through a series of unique event based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. Dave's Hot Chicken is a cult favorite and now has two locations in Fort Worth, Bryant Irvin Road on I-20 and Berry Street at TCU, both owned and operated by Horned Frogs. Mention the Frogs Today show and get 10% off anytime and order online at daveshotchicken.com. Welcome back into the Friday edition of Frogs Today here in the Flying Tea Club studios. We are going to go to the Dissecting the Frogs National Headquarters right now. That's where David Bowden is standing by uh, because it is a big recruiting weekend for the Horned Frogs. A couple of different reasons why. First, let's start, let's start on the individual side, David. There's a quarterback in town that a lot of people are aware of making a visit here to Fort Worth. Fill us in, my man. Yeah, Jaden Rashada. And, you know, he's really arrived on the national scene you know, a few years ago as a top quarterback uh, coming out of California. And he originally committed to Miami this past summer. And then really where his name became almost a household, at least in the college football world, the household name was the Florida Collective reportedly had, had set up a $13 million, uh, you know, had, had promised $13 million over a four-year career in Florida. And then there's been all kinds of problems with that collective coming out of the University of Florida. And that really reared its ugly head after signing day. Jaden committed, signed on the early period, was supposed to report uh, this semester to Florida. And they realized you know, he didn't show up. That, that uh, you know, his whereabouts, no one knew. And, and finally, he asked to be released from his national letter. Florida did grant him that. And so now he's looking for a new home. And there, there are plenty – uh, of suitors out there, you know, trying to trying to get him, and, and TCU is one of them. Um, and I think it's big that he's showing up this weekend, Brian. I'll tell you why. I, I, he's got to show up. He's used the, the NCAA allows you five official visits, as you know. He's used all of that through the recruiting process, so he's coming to TCU to Fort Worth on an unofficial visit, meaning it's on his own dime. Wow! So it, it tells you that he's he's serious about the Horn Frogs. All right, it's TCU in uh, Arizona State. Is that right? Isn't that where his dad went to school? That's right. Yeah, his dad started at at, at start at uh, Arizona State in the early '90s, uh, so he's got some familiarity there. Of course, it's a brand new staff, and they're looking for a quarterback. So it's a situation there that I know is appealing because he has a really good shot of coming in and playing right away. Um, also, Oregon State a little bit uh, kind of on the fringe, and then Washington making a hard push as well. So the, the Pac-12 really heavy trying to get him to to stay on the West Coast. All right, before we get emails about it, David, the $13 million NIL deal, that was Florida. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be at either of these other schools, correct? No, and to be honest with you, I, I don't have any direct knowledge of this, but I don't think it ever was there either. I, yeah. I think some of these numbers are inflated, thrown around. We'll, we really, we'll never know. Um, but, it, you know, this, we could do a whole other show on this, Brian. I think this is where – this is just another bullet point as to why there needs to be some governance – 
and, and to kind of get this stuff wrapped up. And personally, I think there needs to be a binding contract on both ends, you know, yeah. and, because otherwise I'm all for the student athlete having some power in this. Um, but what's happening is they have all the leverage and it's become nearly impossible for the, the institution, for the, for the college university to maintain uh, any kind of roster. And so there's really roster management is nearly impossible these days if this continues. To me, this is also a perfect example of why it is so special that the Flying T Club and TCU work hand in hand the way that they do uh, to where, you know, th there's no... Uh, yeah, there's no superseding the athletic department or the football wishes or anything like that. Uh, we're fortunate here that the, that the collective here at TCU is able to work hand-in-hand -hand with what TCU Athletics is doing, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Make no mistake about it. This is not a situation. But TCU is really fortunate to have the Flying T Club because they're there to support. They're doing everything by the book, doing everything the right way, um, and they're not stepping in. The problem that a lot of these universities are facing right now is the collective is overstepping their jurisdiction and overstepping their bounds and saying, you know, almost acting like an owner of a team or a general manager of a team and making decisions independent of the university of the coaching staff. That's certainly not the case here. Uh, the flying T club has done an outstanding job as we know, and that we've seen up close just supporting them and, and doing it by the book and the way it's supposed to be done. Unfortunately, the same can't be said throughout the rest of the country. Yeah. Those collectives uh, away from TCU, not the one here, they kind of act like HOAs, don't they? You know, you know a little bit about that, I know. Unfortunately, the, I do. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, this weekend is a big junior weekend here at TCU. Huge recruiting opportunity uh, for the TCU coaches to see guys who are rising juniors, correct? Uh, or, or, excuse me, current juniors, I should say, at, T and, at high schools, right? Yeah, they call it a junior day. It's really kind of morphed into an underclassman day. Gotcha. Um, but, uh, you know, so <clears throat> they will have – but the majority will still be the class of 2024 – um, they do have some uh, 2025. I know the tight end over at Duncanville is a guy that they offered recently. Uh, excuse me, out of Allen High School. Uh, really, a, you know, it's going to be a five-star. They, they don't award those fifth stars to the underclassmen, but he will be a five-star tight end. So they're going to get him in, uh, take a visit. And, you know, even though TCU has arrived on the national stage as a brand, uh, certainly with their national championship run, and that has really had an impact in recruiting. They're now getting involved in some national conversations, uh, excuse me, with some national recruits, you know, and battling uh, some traditional blue blood powers throughout the country. They're still making Texas a priority in, in particularly in the DFW. So, you know, the in initial list coming in this weekend, it was 35 kids. I think out of the 35, I want to say 32 or so from Texas, the majority from from this North Texas area. There'll be a few that they add to that kind of guys that hang on to some of their buddies and uh, some guys that want to move in. But, you know, even though they, they're flying around the, the country, the travel has increased. Um, sort of some of these recruiting battles have intensified, uh, you know, going up against the, the Notre Dames of the world, the Michigans, the Ohio States. Um, they still understand that, you know, the best talent is here in DFW. They have access to that. And so for a day like a junior day this weekend, they can just have guys come over, you know, again, it's on their own dime, but they're just getting in the car and, and you know, just driving under 20 miles. So it's nice. You've got a couple of pieces on frogstoday.com, kind of a recruiting update that folks can find uh, that just hit today. If you'll subscribe to frogstoday.com, you'll get the latest there, including a list of who the frogs have offered to date, right? Yeah, what well, we're doing is now just weekly on, on frogstoday.com, we'll have a, a recruiting recap, just kind of, you know, just news and notes and, of all the things that are going on with TCU football recruiting. And, and that includes all the guys that they offered um, from the week. They've been out on the road all week long. The staff has been in many different high schools. And so we'll update you on that. We also have a full list of all the guys coming in for the, for the junior day, as well as an update. Uh, we had a, you know, a new enrollee uh, from the transfer portal. We'll update him and also a little bit more on Jaden Rashada. All right, all that detail is at frogstoday.com. We encourage you to go to that. All right, I'm not going to let you out of here without this. AFC, NFC Championship Games this weekend. Who does the football guru, David Bowden, like for the Super Bowl? Oh, man, I, I don't know. I, I, I you know, happen to know a few guys with the Bengals, and, and uh, so I'm rooting for them, Just, but it's strictly biased. I, I don't know enough about the NFL, Brian. I'm sorry. Oh, come on. It's yeah, all man, football. I, I could have yeah. asked you about I could have asked you about a six man district and you would have given me that. <laughs> You're right. It's recruiting season, man. We got to yeah. focus on that. All right. You just want me to go ahead and say the Eagles for you? 
Sure. sure. Eagles, I, Eagles. I, it's tough. I'm a guy from Boston. That's a tough one, but I guess we'll do it. I know it. Coach David Bowden, always appreciate the time there from Dissecting the Frogs headquarters joining us here. All right. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, that detail uh, on recruiting is going to be on our website at frogstoday.com. We want to encourage you to sign up there, register, subscribe, share, comment, like, get in the forum. We need you there at frogstoday.com. Also need you here on our YouTube channel as well. Again, we want you to subscribe to that and share, like, and comment as much as you can. All right. That's going to do it for today's edition of Frogs Today. Don't forget the Horned Frogs and men's basketball action uh, against uh, Mississippi State. Women take on West Virginia tomorrow, so a busy day tomorrow as far as college basketball is concerned. We'll be back with you on Tuesday with another edition of State of the Frogs with head coach Jamie Dixon. And then Wednesday next week, another edition of Frogs Today. Until then, for our entire crew, thanks for joining us here this week for Frogs Today. Have yourself a great weekend. Frogs Today is brought to you by the Flying Tea Club, supporting TCU student-athletes, and by Richard's Rainwater. Say hello to the water of tomorrow. Frogs Today is a production of Roxo Media House. Roxo Media House.